Alhamdulillah, I'm very happy to be part of this uh, great, wonderful series by Ikna. May Allah reward uh, the brothers and sisters who are organizing these events, and may Allah reward everyone for participating. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, make this uh, uh, session a uh, useful session for all of us and as uh, a good deed uh, in our records in the Day of Judgment, inshallah. I mean, uh, the verses that we're going to cover in this uh, session are uh, from Surah to Nur, Surah Nur, Surah number 24, uh, verses 47 to 52. Verses 47 to 52. So, six verses in. Surah to Nur uh, that we will cover. And, uh, these six verses, uh, basically, uh, before I get into tr uh, translation and tafsir, uh, it covers the behavior of uh, munafiqeen, the hypocrites versus uh, believers towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. How they react, how they respond, how they obey or disobey uh, the in practical terms. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the difference between the two groups. So the verses start with verse 47 in Surah Nur. Allah says, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim, bismillahi rahman ar-rahim, wa yaquluna amanna billahi wa bil rasooli wa ata'na, thumma yatawalla fariqun minhum min ba'd thalik, wa ma ulaika bil mu'mineen. Uh, the verse means, uh, the translation is, they say, and they say that we believe in Allah and in the Messenger, and we obey. But then uh, a group of them turn away uh, after that, and they are not believers. Uh, I'll uh, read the rest of the verses also and translate, and then we come back to the tafsir of it. This next verse 48. وَإِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ إِذَا فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ And when they are invited, when they are called towards Allah and His Messenger to judge among them, to make a ruling among them, uh, a, a, a group of them uh, will, uh, will stay away will, and will decline. وَإِنْ يَكُلْ لَهُمُ الْحَقُّ يَأْتُوا إِلَيْهِ مُذْهِنِينَ Oh, and if the truth is on their side, then uh, they will come submissively, they will come willingly. Meaning if, if the truth is uh, 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 to their favor, then they will come uh, and uh, accept. Is there uh, a disease in their hearts? The first question that Allah is asking, is there a disease in their hearts? The second question, Amir Tabu, or they have doubts. And the third question, Am yakhafuna an yahif Allahu alayhim wa rasooluh? Or do they have fear that Allah and his messenger will not do justice to them? Bal ulaika hum al-zalimun. But no, they are the people who are the wrongdoers, who are the unjust people. إِنَّمَا كَانَ قَوْلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ أَنْ يَقُولُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا Indeed, the response of the believers, the true believers, the, their reaction is that when they are invited towards Allah and His Messenger, their only response, their only reaction would be that we have heard it and we are ready to obey. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And these are the people who are the people of success. They are the successful people. وَمَنْ يُوْتِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَخْشَ اللَّهَ وَيَتَّقِهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger and have fear of Allah and lives based on taqwa, then they are the people who are triumphant, they are getting the final success. 
So as we can see, these verses are uh, loaded and uh, kind of lengthy, but we'll try to summarize the concepts behind them. Uh, the first verse, uh, the first three verses explain the uh, behavior of uh, munafiqeen, the hypocrites uh, towards Allah and the messenger, that basically Allah says that they, in their mouths, in their tongues, they say that we are believers and they say that we are ready to obey, but when they are asked to obey, then you will see that they will turn away in practical terms. And then Allah announces that they are not believers. They are not believers. Believers cannot become believers by just their tongues that they say we are believers. Belief is not something that people can just do lip service for it. They have to really practice it. And and when they are invited, when they are called towards Allah and towards the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that He can judge among them, then again they will decline and they will turn away. And then Allah is asking, "What with these people?" Of course, Allah knows, but He asks these questions to get people to think and reflect. Allah asks, uh, uh, before that, Allah says that, you know, if the truth is on their favor, then they will happily come. You know, if, if the judgment, if they go to the court and they know that the judgment will be in their favor, they will love to obey and listen because they know that in this case, they're gonna, not going to lose anything and they're going to get something, some worldly gains. So in that case, they are not uh, going to uh, turn away, but they're going to be part of it. But if they know that the truth is against them, against their worldly interests, then they will not listen and they will turn away. Now Allah is asking, do they have uh, Afi qulubihim marat? Are there diseases in their hearts? Meaning that these hearts are not healthy hearts. These hearts are not sound hearts. There is some problem in these hearts that they showed such an attitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is wrong with their hearts? What is the disease in their hearts? They better realize. And second, or do they have any doubts? Do they have doubts that this word is the word of Allah? The judgment of Allah is the best judgment? Do they have any doubts that uh, the, the judgment of Allah and Messenger will be the best for them. Do they have any doubt about the truth of the messengership of the, of the prophethood of Muhammad The second question and the third question, do they have the fear that they will be unjustly treated? Would Allah unjustly treat them? Would the decision of Allah and the orders of Allah uh, if they obey and follow uh, will be against their interests? How could they m make such a judgment? And then Allah announces that بَلْ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ The reality is that these are, they themselves are the people who are ظَالِمُونَ who are wrongdoers, who are unjust people. So they should, they should never entertain these thought that Allah may do injustice to them or the Prophet may do injustice to them, but it is themselves. Because Allah, uh, whatever Allah says and the Prophet says is for the khair, for the good of humanity. And there are thousands and thousands of reasons behind anything that Allah says and all kinds of wisdom, all kinds of benefits, whether people realize it or not. So this is the attitude of uh, uh, hypocrites or people who have hypocrisy in their hearts and they call themselves believers. On the other hand, Allah explains the attitude of true believers, that true believers are those people that when they are invited towards Allah and his messenger, their only reaction, their only statement or response is that sami'ana wa ata'ana. Sami'ana wa ata'ana is basically means, literally means that we have heard it and we have obeyed. But it means that we have, uh, as soon as we are hearing it, we are ready to obey. Meaning that a true believer has so much trust in Allah and so much confidence in Allah, so much reliance in Allah. A true believer has so much, you know, dependence on Allah and his messenger that as soon as they hear something from them, they will just say that as, uh, I, as soon as I hear them, I'm ready to obey. Meaning that when it reaches me and I make sure that this is really the correct understanding of the Quran, 
This is the correct understanding of the word of Allah. This is the correct Sahih Hadith and the proper understanding of the Hadith. Then they have no doubt whatsoever in acting upon it, in practicing, in obeying uh, uh, when they hear the orders of Allah and his messenger and the judgment that Allah gives and the messenger gives, the ruling that Allah and the messenger gives. This, is, this really comes as a result of developing Iman in the proper way. See, Iman in Islam, uh, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in fact for all of us humanity, uh, Iman is the most important aspect of our lives. And Islam wants human beings to develop this Iman based on their, uh, based on independence and based on their personal individual choice. First, based, based on independence. It cannot be imposed, la ikraha fi deen. Deen cannot be imposed, iman cannot be imposed on people. Uh, so it, people have to voluntarily accept it and willingly accept it. And second, that they, uh, the, the, the people should be, uh, uh, you know, uh, developing the iman based on a personal uh, choice, based on conviction. Uh, they should be convinced about the truth of uh, Islam uh, and then they should uh, accept Islam. So Islam encourages all kinds of questioning, all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, rational approach to develop the Iman, to develop the faith uh, and basically asking all kinds of questions, does God exist or not? And if God exists, could there be multiple gods? Could there be associates with God? to be convinced about the oneness and Tawheed of God. And then uh, believing in the words and teachings of God, about the promises of God, believing in the next life, believing in the messengers of God, believing in the books of God. So all of this uh, should be developed uh, with a rational approach, asking all kinds of questions until a person is convinced about the truth of the faith. Um, and when a person uh, develops this faith based on conviction, then the expectation is to submit to Allah. Submission to Allah should be a complete and an absolute submission to Allah, complete in every aspect of life and absolute, not relative submission, but uh, total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, basically, uh, when, when you reach the point that you, you know that whatever Allah says, there are all kinds of reasons, all kinds of benefits, all kinds of wisdom behind it. Then you develop this deep trust in Allah that after that, whatever comes from Allah and from the messenger, you just run, you just jump on it and act upon it and you don't question it. Questioning for the sake of information and knowledge is good, but questioning in the sense of criticizing or not being convinced about, that's not encouraged because that kind of question is, question, questioning should be done to develop the faith. And once we develop our faith properly, then we should uh, uh, you know, submit and based on submission, then we should obey. And of course, it's good to know, it's nice to know, it's desirable to know that some of the reasons, some of the benefits, some of the wisdom of the rulings of the ahkam of Allah and the Prophet, but it is not a prerequisite it is not a precondition that I must know all the benefits before I can do that. For example, if Allah asks us to pray five times a day, uh, you cannot say, well, I'm not convinced why I have to pray to start with. And then why I have to pray five times a day? And why not four times? Why not six times? You know, I'm not convinced. Uh, uh, I have to know the reasons and all the benefits before I start praying. That attitude is not right because that means you have doubt about the word of Allah, about the truth of Allah, about the truth of the teachings of Allah and the truth of the teachings of the messenger. That means you, you go back and develop your faith and strengthen your faith. And when your faith is strong and you are convinced about the truth, then you know that, yes, five times prayer is absolutely beneficial for me and useful and I should just go and obey. And in fact, after we start obeying Allah and the messenger, then Allah will enlighten our hearts and our minds to see the truth of his teachings, to see the benefits and the wisdom of it. A lot of times you, have, you might have noticed that some Muslims do not offer the prayer no matter how much you explain to them. But once they start the praying, then they say, wow, wow, 
I wish I had started earlier. I wish I had known about it before. It is so great. There are so many benefits and so much wisdom behind it. Similarly, every other uh, act of obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, when it's done, when we submit ourselves to Allah, or submit our hearts and our minds to Allah, then Allah will enlighten our hearts and minds to see more reasons, to see more benefit, to see more wisdom of it after obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before that, shaitan tries to blind our faith to, tries to blind our, our mind and our hearts, basically, to uh, not to see the truth of it. And it, the shaitan makes it sound so difficult. Oh, to obey Allah and to obey the messenger is so difficult. Uh, it, it is going to cause problem for me. It is going to cause trouble for me in terms of my job, in terms of my relations, in terms of my status and other things among the circles that I'm involved. So, you know, shaitan will come and... If, uh, frighten us in different ways not to obey Allah and his messenger. But the moment we submit ourselves and we start obeying, then we get to see all kinds of benefits more and more as we continue to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, this attitude, which is called sami'na wa ata'na, has been mentioned in at least three places of Quran. Uh, one is at the end of Surah Baqarah when Allah explains the basis of Iman and all the arkan of Iman, most of the arkan of the Iman. Then Allah says the attitude of believers after the, the belief is sami'na wa atana. When it comes to obedience, then they reach the point that they say, as soon as we hear something, it's coming from Allah and the Prophet, and it's the proper understanding of the word Prophet, then we, they, we just obey. We just uh, uh, go ahead and, and follow. And Allah says that these are the people who will succeed, who are getting success. And Allah here uses two words for success, falah and fawz. Falah here first says that these are the people who will be muflihun, the people who will achieve the success. Falah is, what's the difference between falah and fawz? Falah is the success in this world in terms of investing our time and our resources to the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more we devise our time and our resources and our possessions to the cause of Allah, the more successful we are. Whether we see the results or not, we are successful on, in the path of Allah. So falah always comes through giving zakat, through giving, uh, through doing hajj, through uh, uh, offering salat, uh, zikr, all of this. Allah says that this will lead to falah, success. And then fawz, that the following verse says that whoever obeys Allah and the messenger, they will achieve the fawz, is the final success, which is basically the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next world. That the reward of the next world will be the triumph success, the tremendous success that, that, that believers will achieve to earn the pleasure of Allah and to uh, enter Jannah, that is the uh, final victory and success that the believers will be waiting for. And Allah says that whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, وَيَخْشَى, وَيَخْشَى Allah, And they have fear of Allah. يَخْشَى Allah, Fear. يَخْشَى, يخشى it's a very important word compared to خوف. خوف is a general fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then خَشْيَة is a uh, fear based on knowledge, based on ma'rifa uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more we have knowledge of Allah, the more fear we have, the special fear that we will have towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that uh, Allah says, whoever has fear of Allah, fear of standing, uh, fear of uh, the majesty of Allah, fear of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, basically standing in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, وَيَتَّقِهِ and whoever has taqwa. Taqwa also sometimes is translated as fear of Allah, but taqwa is much more than fear. Taqwa is, a, is an attitude of the heart and the mind, basically a state of vigilance of the mind and the heart towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are alert about the existence of Allah, about the uh, powers of Allah, about the role of Allah in this life for us and the role of Allah in our next lives, that is uh, taqwa. And taqwa is a combination of consciousness of Allah, being cautious about Allah, uh, heedful about Allah, and third, fear of Allah. So uh, khawf is included in the taqwa, and yakhsh is also khashya, is, uh, is, a, is a special kind of khawf. 
So whoever has this kind of attitude towards Allah after knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will have naturally this kind of uh, uh, you know, a, a positive fear towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a fear that makes us more responsible, a fear that makes us more productive, more beneficial, then Allah says they will be the one who will reach, will get the fawz, the, uh, the final success, uh, and the, which is the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next life. So these six verses basically beautifully and practically explains to us that how the true believers from uh, false believers or believers who just claim that they are believers can be distinguished. They can be distinguished based on their practice, based on their attitude uh, towards Allah and his messenger. Basically, uh, the, the true believers are those people that they, they submit to Allah absolutely and totally, totally and then they obey Allah and the messenger in practical terms. And the Prophet وسلم, also beautifully explained for us uh, the concept of Iman that basically uh, said that Al-Imanu ma waqara fil qalb wa sadaqa wal hamal that Iman is what uh, gets established in the heart and the actions will testify that. Another hadith it says, Al-Imanu Ma'rifatun fil qalb wa sadaq wa al-hamal. And also another place says, Al-Imanu Ma'rifatun fil qalb wa yaqamu fil lisan wa amalun bil arkan. That Iman is basically uh, is the recognition of the truth in the heart and the admitting of the truth in the tongue expressing the iman in the tongue and acting upon it based on the uh, you know uh, uh, practical terms uh, the pillars of islam basically uh, and this hadith is also reported in ibn majah and tabarani so there are at least three four hadith and many other verses of quran that explain this concept that a true believer has no choice basically when it comes to obedience to allah and his prophet and when they uh, uh, say that I am a Muslim, now it is a very deep commitment to Allah and his messenger. And uh, then obedience is the best way to test this faith, to exemplify this faith, to, to testify this faith that yes, this faith exists. And also uh, in terms of asking questions and in terms of knowing the reasons and the benefits, we are encouraged to do that. Uh, but it is not a prerequisite for the actions, for the ahkam of Allah, but it is a prerequisite for the iman. When it comes to im developing iman, we should ask all kinds of questions. When it comes to obedience, we should start obeying and we will get to learn the benefits, inshallah, more and more. There's much more to cover about these verses, but maybe inshallah, it will come uh, through some of your questions. So uh, I'll, I'll leave the rest of the time for some of your questions and comments, and if you don't have questions, I'll continue and explain more. Zakallah khair. And Jazakallah khair, Dr. Dawood, that's uh, great, mashallah. So let's begin the Q&A session. So as we've done in previous weeks, if the participants can submit their questions in writing, uh, please go to the questions tab um, in the webinar platform and submit your questions in writing. So inshallah, the first question, Yes. In, in verse 50, uh, where it is said, is there a disease in their hearts? And, you know, this is referring to the hypocrites. And one can only think when we read these verses about the hypocrites, we can only think, well, are we falling within this category? So when it says, is there a disease in their hearts? And we try to contemplate on our own Selves and how we can improve the state of our hearts and recognizing that all of us have some level of disease uh, within our hearts. What are the signs of this disease in our hearts? What should we be looking out for? And if it's there, how do we correct it? A very good question. Uh, the disease is... Uh, you know, uh, come to the heart and we are prompted uh, almost all the time uh, 
those kind of uh, diseases. Uh, and that's why the concept of Tazkiyah is the concept of purification, that basically there is some, some virus, some issues that they should be purified. Tazkiyah means to clean it, to remove those diseases, to remove those doubts, to remove those issues. Uh, when we, uh, you know, uh, typically uh, make decisions in terms of our worldly benefits versus uh, uh, akhirah benefits, you know, in a lot of times in our decisions, in our daily life, uh, you know, we sometimes uh, are inclined to prefer our worldly benefits some, uh, and sometimes we are pressured and sometimes we uh, face issues and obstacles that we may prefer the dunya over akhira. Uh, so these are kind of opportunities that, you know, we, uh, if we give in, this disease will develop and this disease will increase. And also disease is the disease of nifaq and hypocrisy that the Prophet Sallallahu explained the signs of hypocrisy that in one hadith he gave three and the other three, four different indications of having nifaq in the heart. And he said that a person, uh, the signs of the nifaq is that uh, a, a person lies a lot and a person uh, betrays uh, trust and a person when he gets upset, he uses very uh, bad language. Uh, so these are some of the uh, signs and also he swears a lot. Uh, so, but, uh, and we should uh, try to avoid these kind of uh, uh, actions uh, in our daily life. Uh, and we, uh, even though we may face some issues and some difficulties and some negative consequences, but for the sake of Allah, we should accept. We give in to shaitan, the disease increases uh, and becomes stronger. And whenever we uh, fight against shaitan, and in the, for the sake of Allah, then uh, the disease gets removed and, and become weaker. And basically our Iman becomes stronger and the heart becomes more pure uh, and submits to Allah in better ways and can see the truth of Allah. And so with the concept of sabr, the concept of tawakkul, the concept of, uh, you know, uh, trusting uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of consequences of our actions, uh, this really uh, fights against uh, those kind of diseases. Jazakallah, Karen. Um, the next question, you mentioned the word fala. Please, can you explain more what this term means? Yes. So the word fala simply means success. And success, of course, is something that everybody wants to have. Uh, but success from Allah's point of view could be different from success from our point of view. Uh, we usually uh, look at success as, as rewards and benefits of certain goals that we want to uh, achieve. And uh, when we achieve those goals, then we are saying we are successful. But when Allah, our creator, sets the goals and then he calls us successful from his point of view, that is really uh, the real meaning of success. So falah uh, actually uh, also has been used uh, for uh, the world of farmers and others, but here in uh, specifically falah is the success uh, of uh, uh, success based on achieving the goals that Allah has set for us. And uh, basically through the actions, through the orders of Allah and the messenger that has been given, have been given to us, when we uh, want to do that through Salah, Zakah, through Hajj, through Siyam, through uh, all of these different acts of obedience, uh, Allah relates them to Falah, usually that uh, uh, almost uh, at the end of all, most of those verses that Allah explains the uh, attributes of true believers in this life, then they say these are the people who are uh, successful, like in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, that Allah explains the uh, attributes of uh, Muttaqeen, and then says that these are the people who are Muflihun, they have uh, success. So that's the concept of Salah, Falah, basically success in this world, but from Allah's point of view, in ref reference to his teachings in terms of devising our resources, our uh, faculties, uh, our possessions, our talents, our time to the cause of Allah. The more we devise these uh, faculties to the cause of Allah, the more successful we are. 
Jazakallah khair. Regarding Iman, is it possible for Iman to be only with respect to action? Is it possible for Iman to be only with action? Yeah, or should Iman be manifested in ways other than action as well? Yes, uh, Iman will be manifested uh, through the love of Allah and the Messenger. Uh, and the love of Allah and Messenger, of course, is a very special love that uh, should be better than any other love that people have. Uh, and uh, the uh, love of Allah actually drives people towards the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and uh, so love is a manifestation of Iman. Uh, obedience is a manifestation of Iman. And, uh, you know, seeking the pleasure of Allah is the manifestation of Iman. Uh, looking forward to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the manifestation of Iman. Uh, earning Jannah is a manifestation of Iman. And being uh, beneficial and productive in the society uh, uh, from Iman point of view, uh, that uh, you know you do the best uh, and you obey Allah and the Messenger automatically makes you the best person and the most beneficial person. Uh, uh, those will become the manifestations of Iman. And uh, knowledge also uh, will be uh, blessed by Iman. Uh, the stronger the Iman is, the more blessed the knowledge becomes, and the knowledge becomes more beneficial and uh, uh, useful for the person and for others. Uh, so Iman has all kinds of manifestations uh, that will show up in the life of the person and the society. How can we try to improve the connection between us and Allah? Beautiful question. How can we improve our connection and relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, by reflecting about Allah, who Allah is, to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we would love him, the more we will feel his mercy, his powers, his attributes. And uh, the, uh, uh, the more we get to know him, the closer we get to him. Most of the time, uh, people do not know who Allah is. Uh, and they make all kinds of wrong judgments about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including as Muslims, a lot of us make wrong judgments about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes we criticize Allah directly or indirectly. Sometimes we complain in a way that is a form of criticism uh, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all uh, because of not knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the more we know Allah, the more we will, you know, get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this is one. Uh, and then the more we uh, connect to, through his book and through his teachings, uh, then the closer we get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, his teachings come through the Quran and through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So th the more we learn the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the more we act upon them, the closer we get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, also, uh, reflection on the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reflection on the nature, reflection on our uh, ourselves, on our own lives, reflections on everything that we deal with on a daily basis, uh, uh, all around us and circumstances and everything. Uh, all of this uh, uh, are basically anything around us are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the day and the night is the sign of Allah, the heavens and the earth, the sun and the moon, they are all signs of Allah. And the more we reflect on the signs of Allah, uh, the closer we get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reflection on next life and uh, thinking about next life and making efforts to prepare ourselves more and more for next life and make us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reflection on the angels around us that exist and record our deeds and that system that Allah has designed for us in this world that will be used in the Akhirah for our judgment, you know, makes us more and more uh, careful and responsible and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, also, the more we do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we uh, think about uh, the, those teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that in every aspect of our life, he has given 
some different teachings that Allah basically has a role in everything that we eat and we drink and we walk and we talk. Uh, when we use those afkar, uh, this will take us closer to Allah. And also through service to humanity and to community, the more we serve the people, the creation of Allah, the more we do da'wah, the more we call people towards Allah, uh, the more we uh, want to uh, help people and relieve them from difficulties and hardships, uh, they, uh, the more we charity that we give, they all help us to come closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more we love the masajid and the places of worship and we, uh, the, the more we worship Allah in more intense ways, especially in the middles of the night and in the five daily prayers and in all other ways, it brings us closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are all kinds of ways and methods that will bring us closer and closer to Allah if I, have, if I just suffice with just a few such examples. Okay. If we reflect a little bit on the title of today's webinar, which is, do we submit half-heartedly or wholeheartedly? And you know, reflecting a little bit on what you said about linking hypocrisism uh, with not having full commitment with samitna wa ta'na, we hear and we obey. Now, this is obviously very clear when it comes to the acts in Islam which are fard, we're absolutely required to do. But when it comes to some of those acts which are highly recommended sunnahs, such as you know praying the sunnah de mokida prayers, um, does this apply here as well? If we are struggling and, and not consistently performing some of the sunnah acts within the deen, is this a sign of hypocrisy? Is this a sign of submitting only half-heartedly? Very good question. Zakhalo uh, Khair. Yes, uh, we all, you know, start at some point. Uh, nobody is perfect and no, and we will not be perfect. We will try to move towards the perfection, which is the model that the Messenger has established for us. He was uh, perfect as, as perfect as a human can be. He is our model. So we all need to strive towards that path. Uh, as we start, we may not be fully committed. Many of us may not have the total submission to Allah in the beginning. But what counts in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always is our intention and our effort. These are the two main things because the Prophet ﷺ said, All actions are based on intentions. And in terms of uh, efforts, Allah says, There is nothing for human beings except their efforts, basically. That uh, you know, these two are the most important things that Allah looks at. So anybody who has the pure intention to turn to Allah, to please Allah, to overcome the difficulties and the issues that they have, to overcome the, the sins that they have done, to overcome the wrong paths that they have taken, taken in the past, or the half-hearted submission that they have and they want to become better and better. Uh, the moment that they have this intention that they want to move towards the uh, path, the right path, and the efforts they make counts in the eyes of Allah in very high scales. And they get their due rewards and, you know, somebody who may be uh, just starting and he's not even reached half-hearted, but he's just starting, but he's starting with a great intention, with a great amount of effort, maybe than many of us who have already reached a, a, a very advanced path in our own eyes or eyes of some other people, in the eyes of Allah, maybe that person who just is starting is uh, much advanced in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah looks at our intentions and our efforts. So everybody is welcome to try and not to, uh, you know, uh, not to give up this path. And uh, we all uh, are following uh, the, the path, the straight path, inshallah, with our uh, best of our resources, with our best of our uh, talents, with, our, uh, with the best of our efforts. Uh, so we should not think that uh, I'm not because I'm not like that, or I'm not because I'm not like so and so. Then I cannot make it. That's all I can do now. Uh, at all situations and opportunities, we have choices, and when we make a better choice in our daily life, in every action, we're getting closer to Allah. 
and this half-heartedness will inshallah become fuller and and uh, moves towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, all of us, no matter in what situation we are, uh, we should have this confidence. And it, when it comes to fara'id, of course, and wajibat and uh, the obligatory things and also the haram things that we must stay away, of course, uh, we should try our best to stay away from it and to uh, fulfill it as much as possible, the do's. And then the sunnahs and the recommended things, again, uh, we try our best. We try our best to stay away from things that are macro. We try our best to add our recommended things. But we must start first to stay away from haram and we do the obligatories. We start with these two, which are the most important aspects of the deen. And then we focus on uh, the recommended things uh, of sunnah, which means recommended in terms of Islamic law and not in terms of hadith, but also uh, the uh, macro hard that we should avoid so it takes a gradual approach, and sometimes we have to give the right priority to the decision and to action uh, that where I should uh, uh, put more emphasis on more focus. Uh, and uh, if, if we cannot do some of the sunnahs at some point, as long as we are trying to do it in the future, or as long as we're making some little efforts, it helps. And the Prophet wasallam basically when he said, you know, a person cannot do shukr for big things if he does not do shukr for small things. Basically, if people are not grateful to Allah for small things, they cannot be grateful to big things. So that also means that when we do some little actions and we are able to do, we should be thankful to Allah. And if we are able to do bigger things also, we should be thankful to Allah. And, and these small things at some point will become very big and important. So we should not look at uh, those small sunnahs as a small sunnahs. Each sunnah is as its own priority and importance. And whatever we can do, we should do. Whatever we cannot do, we should ask Allah for forgiveness. And we should ask Allah the ability uh, for the ability to do it. And inshallah, we will reach and we will uh, move forward with that kind of approach and attitude. Okay, then this will be the final question, inshallah. Um, and it's a question about the jinn. So all mankind has jinn. Uh, can you comment on whether the Prophet ﷺ was able to take command of his own jinn? Uh, the question is that was he? Uh, what 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 about the Prophet? Yeah, was the Prophet uh, Suleiman um, able to take command of his jinn? Okay. Yeah, uh, so jinn is a special creature that, for those who are not familiar quickly, that it's an invisible creature that we believe that it exists and they have freedom of will uh, like human beings. So uh, there are some jinn which are believers and there are some jinn which are not believers. Now, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has given the uh, control of jinn uh, to Sulaiman as a special miracle and a special power that he gave that jinn was basically his soldiers. Uh, that uh, invisible sources that uh, forces that they will go and fight for him uh, but uh, jinn uh, also has been, been mentioned to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they would come and listen to his recitation of quran uh, but uh, uh, you know not necessarily uh, uh, with, with Sulaiman is an exception with the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it has not been mentioned that uh, jinn was uh, you know put under his control but of course the believing jinn they will listen to him and they will I love to convey the message of the prophet to their own jinn and species but the disbelieving jinn you know uh, could try and uh, be in the form of shaitan even for every prophet uh, made to challenge the prophets and then just quickly to link it back to the subject of today's webinar um being able to submit to allah wholeheartedly um how can we take control over our jinn uh, in terms of them not allowing us to um, affect our relationship with submitting to Allah. It's basically, uh, in concluding uh, remarks related to that, that, uh, you know, Chaotin, the, the disbelieving jinn, uh, that's their job and that's their duty to uh, cause barriers between us and Allah and between us and our progress. Uh, towards Allah. So we should always be uh, vigilant of that and we should know that that's part of life, that's part of challenges. But Allah has promised that when we try towards Allah, they have no sulta, no power, 
those jinn cannot do anything and as soon as we turn to allah they will be defeated yes they will cause more and more problems the more we give in to them the more we listen to them otherwise we will succeed so allah has promised those people who try their best to obey allah and the prophet those uh, obstacles including the jinn will be uh, defeated and they cannot stop us uh, they will create uh, hurdles for us they will create some challenges for us but that's part of life because we're tested and test uh, uh, part of the test is to have uh, invisible uh, sources of temptation such as jinn and uh, the more we uh, try to succeed in the test inshallah the more we will uh, succeed and uh, we please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jazakallah dr dawa that's uh, really great mashallah um, so with that we'll end uh, we'll continue again next week um subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim wal asr innal insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawassaw bil haqq wa tawassaw bis sabr sadaqallahu alazim jazakallah khairan